Hi, and welcome home. Thank you for inviting me over to talk about two of my favorite things, doing retreat and doing retreat at home. My name is Lopsak Kading, or Ven Cat to most. I've been a nun for eight years and have supported Dharma centers for 18 years while raising two sons as a single mom. I participated in a great three-year meditation retreat and thoroughly, thoroughly enjoyed doing one-month meditation retreats every year for seven years before that. My sons did rebel at the beginning of my retreat career when I would try to sneak in two months of retreat annually. <laughs> my life prior to Buddhism was engaged with stimulating economic viability in poor rural communities around the world through a variety of community development projects. I homesteaded three times on long dirt roads with my sons, building homes from the dirt up while living on the land in very remote areas. The reason I'm telling you this is because now, nearing my mid-60s, I've been coming to radical conclusions that the bulk of the world's problems might only be solved if everyone went home and stayed there for some weeks and months at a time meditating as you're doing now. Running the factories, driving through commuter traffic, shopping, living as a frantic a life as we've done for the past hundred years just isn't revealing any deeply helpful solutions, have you noticed? And we are in a dire, a severe downward spiral on this planet. It's been seeming to me that a total arrest of normal daily activity is absolutely required to reboot the human mind so we can dust the dirt off our trousers, shake our heads and ask what in the world have we been doing and thinking every day? Look at the results. After great deliberation, staying at home and doing spiritual retreats seems to me to be the only solution to the suffering that has plagued our entire planet. I am thrilled and amazed that you are now taking the time to go home and do a complete system reboot. Congratulations and thank you. This is how to change the world. So what are the joys of doing a retreat? In the lineages of spiritual retreats, you'll have a unique window into the places beyond your brain, reaching out into a galaxy beyond space and time. It takes a few days of settling the mind before you start to experience the freedom of this exploration, which is the true final frontier. For those of you who meditate every day, you already get a sampling of this feeling. But granting yourself days and weeks to indulge in this extraordinary playground is like nothing else. You'll discover solutions, I promise, beyond your wildest imaginations. And what about the joys of doing a retreat at home? Well, of course, doing your retreat at home eliminates the stress and expense of going somewhere else for this adventure. You already have your favorite pillow and your favorite dish towels right there in front of you. You know where to find the forks and you know where your favorite mug is. So what are the challenges of doing a retreat at home? I know it might feel impossible to do a retreat at home if you have a family there especially while everyone is trapped at home together. See if you can set aside a spare bedroom or dress up that tool shed where you'll be cloistered for the entire retreat. Hopefully your family will respect the importance of this solo adventure and allow you the space to remain undisturbed during the entirety of your retreat. I put myself in the basement for my first solo retreat and my partner and the kids were great to not come careening down the stairs or talk to me when they caught me sneaking into the bathroom or the kitchen late at night. A good friend of mine came over to help take care of the kids, my business, the nine dogs, the two cats, the three horses and the mule. And if you can turn the idea into a game where everyone has a role to play in supporting your quietude, I think you'll all be very pleased with the results. For me, the next biggest challenge of doing a retreat at home was putting aside the home improvement projects. 
This is not the time for you to organize your closet, nor the time to paint the bathroom. In fact, it's a very good idea to hang lovely sheets over the bookshelves and other attractive walls and decorations that will pull your mind away or back to earth. You do not want reminders of last summer when you read that book at the lake, or you will not want to jump to thoughts of the good deal you got on that piece of art hanging in the hall. Try hard to narrow your attention to a beautiful and ornate altar that you set up in a corner of your room where the only activity done is sitting on your cushion and making offerings. Lastly, make a very small selection of reading materials that you'll want with you, such as a prayer book or one meditation manual. Again, this is not the time that you spend researching scriptures or methodologies with a library at your elbow. You want to prevent as much outside stimulation as possible and stick to the meditation focus that your teacher has given you. Now granted, it might start to feel very boring and unbearable to go over the same meditation four times a day for weeks on end, but this is how we make deep and profound changes to our minds and to our world, I promise. Towards the end of the retreat, start to make some notes. You've spent a good amount of time now with the Holy Ones and the enlightened beings in their realms. And I bet some pretty good ideas are coming to you, solving problems at work or with your family. So please be sure to take a few hours during the last few days of your retreat and write these ideas in your journal. You can trust them to be powerful and helpful, and you don't want to forget them after getting back into the world. Again, thank you for doing long retreats, as I'm absolutely convinced this is the only way we can deeply change our minds and help a suffering world. Could there be one? Of course, we can't wait to host your next retreat at Diamond Mountain when everyone is safe because of this retreat you are doing now at home. Forever for this, we say thank you.